Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Death deals a diamond. Yes, we have that story for you. Come right over. chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is. Death Deals a Diamond. The very exciting story of a brilliant play that was finessed by murder. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. Hal Hampton had been in the diamond business, taking without paying. And then one day he heard a judge say... Five years in the state prison. And Hal Hampton was no longer in the diamond business. Our story begins early one evening, five years and three weeks later. Hal was in his room at the Midtown Hotel, trying to forget the past and wondering what to do about the future, when there came a knock, knock, knocking at the door. Not expecting anyone, he opened it anyway. Hello, Hal. Uh so what's the big idea? Don't argue with me, sweetheart. I might get nervous and shoot. What do you want? Ask me in first. Oh, come on. Be a gentleman. Well, there's not much I can do about it, is there? Would you mind if we left the door open just a little bit? Company outside? I like cross-ventilation. Okay. Behave yourself and it won't be in you. What's your name? Myra Keats. Don't look so hard. You've never met me before. I wasn't exactly looking at your eyes, honey. Who sent you here? I work for the Lawless Detective Agency. You don't say. No wisecracks. The boss's name happens to be Sam Lawless. All right, Myra, what's this all about? I want the diamonds you stole from Randy's jewelry store. What? A half a million dollars worth. And don't tell me you didn't take them. Now, look, I just finished a five-year stretch. I've just been out three weeks. I know all about it. But I'm talking about yesterday when you walked out of Mr. Randy's office with a tray full of diamonds. Who told you that? Mr. Randy. Yeah? Why didn't he yell for the police? He couldn't at the time. No, he'd rather not. He wants his diamonds, and he's willing to pay $25,000 to get them. Go on, Myra. You're beginning to fascinate me. Mr. Randy doesn't want publicity, that's all. He's got a high-class trade. So I see. Well, Mr. Hampton? It just occurred to me that I'm feeling fine. I've got nothing to worry about. I'm glad to hear that, pal. What? Oh. Is that the cross-ventilation? Mm-hmm. Sam Lawless, the boss. With a gun, no less. Well, two guns are better than one. Shut up, Hal. You're still an amateur, Myra. You should have had this guy hanging on the ropes by now. You didn't give me a chance, Sam. He's only a crook, and Mr. Randy's giving him a break. Twenty-five grand instead of twenty years in jail. <laughs> Shut up, or I'll give you the gun across the kisser. Oh, you're a tough guy, huh? Listen, you ex-con. Sam. Okay, baby. I got plenty of time to draw blood. Let's search the room. You take that chest of drawers, and I'll pull the bed apart. Just a couple of amateurs, huh? This is only the beginning, pal. Okay, let me know when you're through, and I'll tell you where else to look. Sam, come here. You find them, baby? Just come over here and take a look at what was under a pile of handkerchiefs. Yeah. So you don't hide things in a chest of drawers, do you, Hal? Where'd that diamond come from? Look at him, Myra. He's surprised. You're framing me. You just planted that stone in there. You tell us where you put the others, or we'll plant a stone over your head. Now listen to me. The others, Mr. Hampton, where are they? Look around for yourself. You've got a knack for finding things. Oh, he won't cooperate, Myra. Well, there's only one thing to do. Here, put these handcuffs on him. With pleasure. Now, wait a minute. Hal, don't be a problem, child. I wouldn't like to spank the life out of you. But you're going to anyway. Not yet. First, we'll take a trip to my office. Mr. Randy is waiting for you with a lot of bad news. No, no, Mr. Hampton, there's no need to be so upset. Get these cuffs off me, Mr. Randy. Sam, the man is very uncomfortable. Maybe he'll talk faster. Sorry, Mr. Hampton, I've done my best. Now, about those diamonds you stole from me. Oh, nuts. Please be more expressive. We know your reputation for slickness and charm, the most renowned diamond thief since the great raffle. Thanks for the plug. Do I take a bow? Unfortunately, I didn't know you yesterday when I let you into my store and into my office where I keep my greatest treasures. Sure, sure. 
Please don't deny that you were there, Mr. Hampton. I've already done that. I showed you a tray full of diamonds, and you walked out with it while I was in the safe getting another. <laughs> Very well. Myra, will you ask Mr. Brown to come in here? Of course, Mr. Randy. Mr. Brown? Oh, he's not in this other room, Mr. Randy. Well, look for him. All right. And now, Mr. Hampton, just in case you're wondering, Mr. Brown is one of my salesmen. He waited on you just before he turned you over to me. Oh, you've got the whole team out, haven't you? Except the police. And I'll call them if you refuse to do business with me. $25,000 worth? That was my offer. Grab it, Hal. Don't be a sucker. Oh, uh, by the way, what does Sam get out of this deal? Oh, a small service charge. Plus a very handsome reward of $5,000. Uh-huh. 30000 just to get back your own merchandise? The insurance company ought to build you a monument, Randy. Shall we talk about diamonds, Mr. Hampton? You talk. I'm going. Where to, Hal? Oh. <laughs> Sam, that gun's beginning to look like a double feature. I hope it doesn't bore you, pal. Oh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Come in, Brown. I was walking up and down in the hallway. It's so much cooler than in the... Oh, my... Handcuffs. Yeah, it seems to be the latest style, Brownie. Brownie? Now, look here, young man, I don't like that. Why, Mr. Randy, this young man, he's the diamond thief. Mr. Hampton denies that he was in my store, Brown. He does? But that's ridiculous. I waited on you, Mr. Hampton, and I couldn't do a thing to please you. Ah, go on. I bet you didn't even try, Brownie. I was forced to ask Mr. Randy to take over. Then you and he went into his office. The next thing I knew, Mr. Randy was asking about you. He'd been robbed. And you had disappeared. Does that settle it, Mr. Hampton? Only from your angle, Randy, but you'll never get away with it. You prefer to be stubborn. Very well, Sam, take over. Right. I'll get the truth out of him. I'm sure you will. Come along, Brown. We must get back to the store. Uh, yes, sir. Myra, I want you and Sam to see that Mr. Hampton doesn't leave without my consent. He won't, Mr. Randy. Will he, Sam? I don't want to be disturbed, baby. All right. Now, Hal, it's just you and me. You want to talk while you've still got a mouth? Look, why don't you give me a break? I've just done five years. Okay. Get these cuffs off me. Don't be sore, pal. I'm only doing my duty. I promised Mr. Randy I'd get the truth out of you. And I've never welched on a promise to a client yet. <laughs> It's no go, Myra. You won't open up? Nope. Why'd you quit? Listen, you can't beat an unconscious guy. That guy in the next room is out cold. Why don't you use some water on him? I've been told it works miracles. You're a pretty cold baby, Myra. I don't like crooks. Yeah? Well, I'm not so sure Hal's the crook in this case. What? No guy can take the beating I just gave him and keep his mouth shut. Not even for a half a million in diamonds? I almost killed him, Myra. You heard him yelling. I didn't hear him yell diamonds, Sam. I tell you, he's innocent. That goes okay with hearts and flowers. But we've got $5,000 tied up in a confession from Hal. What makes you so anxious to get that confession? Well, I've been told a girl can get a pretty good mink coat for half of $5,000. That's all? Maybe if I shop around, I can get a mink coat and a pair of shoes. That confession wouldn't be tied up with a double cross, would it, baby? What do you mean? You found that diamond in Hal's room, in the chest of drawers. So? A very peculiar place for a diamond that wasn't planted. Hold your horses, Sam. Hal Hampton was one of the smartest con men in the business before he went to jail, and he's still smart. He wouldn't keep stolen property where it could be found. You uh, get your ideas late in life, don't you? I get them when they count, honey. You, uh... You palmed that stone, didn't you? You're crazy. You had it on you all the time. And when you went to that chest of drawers, you just parked it under the handkerchiefs. You're getting crazier by the word. You've got the rest of that fortune, too, baby. Do tell. And who gave it to me? Randy, maybe. For safekeeping? Yeah? Yeah. While Hal Hampton was being set up for 20 years. Oh, get yourself locked up where it's good and quiet. You're becoming a menace. I've got a better idea. What you've got, we're going to keep. That'll teach Randy never to trust anybody. Would you, uh, double-cross a paying client? Fifty percent, baby, of half a million in stones. Come on, take me to them. I'm dying for a split. You, uh, better close that door, Sam. What for? Mr. Hampton may not be as unconscious as you think. Okay. Now... Now. Hey, put down that gun, Myra. Give me one good reason, Sam. What are you going to do? Nothing. I just want to see your apartment again. And you're going to take me there. Eh? What for? Diamonds, dear. You know what you said about me. 
except this is with reverse English. Oh. Hal. Mm. Watch me. It's Myra. Come on. Sit up. Let me get at that guy. Get these cuffs off me. They are off, honey. What? I took them off. Oh. Thanks a half million. Was it before or after I died? I don't blame you for being sore at me. I was all wrong about you, sweetheart. Uh Uh-huh. I mean it. You didn't steal those diamonds. Oh, no. Please believe me. I even convinced Sam you didn't. Did it, uh... Did it take much convincing? A little. And, uh... You did it all for me. Do you mind? You're so handsome. No, I don't mind. Come here, baby. <gasps> see what I mean, Hal? I see. Not bad. Now, if you could only sound as good as you taste... Hal! This would be paradise. You low-down heel. I should have let Sam kill you. And rub out a possibility? You're no good to me at all. I try to help you. I try to get you out of a hole. But you got me into it. I didn't put that diamond under your handkerchief. It wasn't on my laundry list, Blue Eyes. I didn't put it there. Now, do you want to get out of this frame, or don't you? I do, Myra, but not with your help. You're going to get it, whether you like it or not. Now, listen. Mr. Andy and Sam Lawless had a meeting three days ago. The first of a series, I suppose. Sam didn't tell me what it was about. But I've got a hunch that you and Diamonds were on the agenda. Keep going, Myra. Randy's business hasn't been all it's cracked up to be. A lot of stock and a few customers, and you know how a man sees red. Uh Uh-huh. And you think he's shifting stock to collect insurance? I'm not to be quoted, Hal. Well, keep it a state secret. Now, the diamonds. I'm not sure. But Randy's too smart to stow them where they might be found. But uh, Sam isn't, huh? Don't count your chickens before you can buy them. Sam Lawless is very smart. But he doesn't know I suspect him, and he might be just a wee bit careless. Mm Mm-hmm. And the logical place for that wee bit of carelessness? I don't know. Okay, We'll start with his apartment. You show me where. Oh, I guess we're too late, Hal. Sam's gone. Yeah. Well. No use turning the doorknob, sweetie. Sam never leaves his door unlocked. Never? Well, let's say hardly ever. I don't like it, Hal. Something's wrong. Oh. Uh-huh. Living room looks all right. Well, the lights are on. Um, would, uh, would that room over there be the bedroom? Hell. Okay, okay, just a point of information. Let's go look, then the next time you're asked, you'll know. Thanks. You're so educational. Well, let it. Holy smoke. <gasps> Sam. Stay where you are, baby. Sam, on the floor. How is he, Hell? He was shot through the head. Oh? Is he dead? Don't you know, Myra? What? What were you doing while I was sleeping off that beating in Sam's office? I was... Hal, did I ever call you a heel? I think you did. Then you're a double heel if you think I killed him. In the first place, what for? A sparkling motive, honey. You're wrong. I don't know where the diamonds are, and I was only guessing about Sam. And in the second place, I haven't got wings. Not the heavenly kind, anyway. You were unconscious only about ten minutes, and I brought you two. That leaves me out. Could I get here to Sam's apartment, kill him, and then get back to Sam's office in in ten minutes? You could, if, uh... If I was unconscious, say, uh, half an hour. But you... Company. I'll take it, Myra. Hello? What? Uh, let me speak to Myra Keats, please. Why not? For you, Myra. Sounds like Randy. Oh? And he asked for me? Maybe he knows what he's doing, huh? Maybe. Hello? Myra, was that Mr. Hampton who answered the phone? Yes. What's he doing in Sam's apartment? I brought him here. Why? I distinctly remember asking you to keep him in Sam's office. And I distinctly remember changing my mind. Perhaps you'll learn that I don't like to have my orders countermanded, Miss Keats. Perhaps I will, Mr. Andy, but not tonight. Oh, I see. Will you tell Mr. Lawless that if he wants to do business with me, he'll have to get rid of you. Do you understand? He gets rid of you or I get rid of him. You hear that, Hal? I heard it. He didn't even ask for Sam. Maybe he didn't throw him the right cue. What? There's nothing like a prearranged argument to make the case more binding. Five years in prison have done things to your mind, haven't they? Uh-huh. Doesn't trust anybody. All right. Then I'll prove to you I had nothing to do with Sam's death or with Randy's phone call. Wait for me. Here? Here. <laughs> I wonder what you'd look like without a gun. I'm going to see Randy with it. 
And when I'm through with him, you'll be calling me lovey-dovey. Long distance. Don't kid yourself. And, Hal, don't try to use that phone to tip off Randy. I'm going to pay him a visit. Well, to tell you the truth... It's been disconnected. You're powerful, honey. But how are you going to keep me here without a key? I have that, too. And don't ask me where I got it. A gentleman never does. Goodbye, darling. Oh, no. Myra, Myra, don't be a fool. I believe you. Myra, I believe you. Now, let me out. <sighs> Baby, I don't want you to do anything I'll be sorry for. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. Listen, mister, are you trying to flirt with me? Got any objections? What'll the neighbors think? I'll tell them it's just an across the courtship. Oh, a comedian. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't pull that window down. Why not? You got something better to offer? What's your name? Cookie. And I ain't even taken the trouble to ask you yours. It's Hal Hampton, Cookie, and I'm in trouble. Natch? A fellow that you who's to nice girls across the court. Cookie. Cookie, wouldn't you like to help me out of a fix? Oh, so now it comes to a proposition. I guess all you men are alike. No, please, please. I really need help. Yeah? Of the nature of what kind? Now, look. I- I'm trapped in this apartment, see? Will you help me? Well, all right. What must I do that will not compromise me with my reputation? Come to this apartment and bring a hairpin with you. A hairpin? What for? So you can pass it through the keyhole, and I'll use it to unlock the door. Is that all you want me to do? One thing at a time, baby. After I'm out, I, uh, I promise to pay you a visit in person. Oh. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? Tall, handsome, and mysterious. I'll be right over. Imagine opening a door with a hairpin. Honest, Mr. Hampton, I'll never get over it. Well, you keep thinking about it, Cookie, while I use your phone, huh? I read about such things in books, but I... Uh, excuse me, mister. You got ideas about calling another girl? Oh, no. I wouldn't do a thing like that to you, baby. Well, then you're a gentleman. Because after all, if it wasn't for me and now, my hold it, hold it, baby, will you? Hello. Randy's jewelry store. Who is this? Mr. Brown, sir. Is there anything I can do? Uh, this is Hal Hampton. Let me talk to oh, Miss... Mr. Hampton. Would you like to speak to Mr. Randy? Yeah. Well, he was here only a few minutes ago. He went out with Miss Keats. Oh, where to? Uh, he mentioned his apartment, sir. Uh-huh. Okay, meet me there right away. All right. But what should I do with this store? I'll tell you some other time. Randy needs you at his apartment. Really? He said nothing to me. How could he, Brownie? He didn't know he was going to be set up for a murder. I'll get there as fast as you can. Are you going, Mr. Hampton? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid I'll have to, Cookie. Do you mind? Well, I was sort of building myself up. I thought you were going to... You know. Well, not quite, baby. But, um, I'll be back someday, and, uh, then you and I will get together. Yeah? Uh Uh-huh. And, uh... You can draw me a nice big diagram. Oh, uh, Mr. Hampton. Oh, Brownie, you got here in record time. Your message was so full of foreboding, I, I had to rush. All right, all right. Take a minute to catch your breath. Oh, no. If Mr. Randy's in danger, I... Well, we must get to him immediately. Well, you're strictly loyal, aren't you? I've been associated with him for 20 years, and I've been very happy. Is that why you lied about my having been at the store? Mr. Hampton, you've tricked me. You said Mr. Randy's life was in danger. So I did. Well, the boss doesn't answer and the door's locked. How's your shoulder, Brownie? Except for a little rheumatism now and then. I never complain. Well, you're going to help me break down this door. Break it down? Oh, no, Mr. Hampton, I couldn't do that. Well, don't tell me you've got scruples, old man. Come on, now. Here. Oh, Mr. Randy will never forgive me. (laughs) Once more, Brownie. (laughs) Well... You've done it, Mr. Hampton. If Mr. Randy should ever speak to you about it... I don't it, think he will, Brownie. Oh, please don't mention that I... Mr. Randy. On the floor. Uh-huh. With a bullseye in his chest. Oh, good heavens. Is he... Yes, Brownie, he is. Please, Mr. Hampton. I... I'm afraid I'm going to faint. Oh, stop it, Brownie. Don't pass out now. I've never seen a dead man before. One who'd been shot. Well, look, Mr. Hampton. He's still holding the gun. Do you think he, it was suicide? Maybe. Hmm. There's a note on the table. Let's see what it says. I don't know why Mr. Randy should have committed suicide. He was leading such a full life. Typewritten note, Brownie. Listen, it's addressed to the police. It'll be discovered that a half million in diamonds have disappeared from my store. 
This theft was arranged between Sam Lawless and myself for the purpose of defrauding the insurance company. I entrusted the diamonds to Mr. Lawless' keeping, but he deceived me. Now I'm left with nothing. There's no other course for me to take. Hmm. What do you think, Browning? Well, I, I can't believe it, Mr. Hampton. He was my employer for 20 years. The note's a phony, pal. What? Brandy was murdered. Oh, no. The safety catch is on this gun. Is on? Uh, but what does that mean? A man can't kill himself and then put the safety catch on. I, I don't quite understand. Somebody's a child of habit, Brownie. Well, there's only one thing to do. How would you like to play detective? I? Sit down, Brownie, and I'll tell you exactly what to do and where to begin. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is Mr. Brown. Is that my phone? Mr. Randy's assistant. Oh, what do you want? I think you and I should meet someplace for a very long talk, Miss Keats. Why, Mr. Brown, have you been taking lessons? I've just come from Mr. Randy's apartment. Uh-huh. I was very much surprised to find Mr. Randy's body there and a suicide note. What? What are you talking about? I took the suicide note. You see, Miss Keats, I don't want the police to be misled by it. Mr. Randy did not commit suicide. Now, wait a minute, Brown. I've got a little catching up to do. You shot and killed my employer. And I'm prepared to tell the police why. What is this cutie, a holdup? I happen to know that you and Mr. Randy planned the disappearance of those diamonds. And that Mr. Randy entrusted them to you for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. Until Mr. Hampton had been forced to confess and had been sent to prison. Who gave you all this valuable information, Brown? Uh, Mr. Randy had a weakness for keeping memoranda about his deals. The frailty of human nature, you know. He was not a very trusting soul. What am I supposed to do? Well, uh, for a consideration of half the diamonds, I'll turn over the memorandum to you and replace the suicide note. You name the place and the time, Mr. Brown. Mr. Randy's office at 11.30 sharp. And bring my share of the diamonds. All right, Angel. I'll try not to keep you waiting. <laughs> It's 12 o'clock, Mr. Hampton. Uh, midnight. Ronnie, are you sure you told her everything? Exactly as you laid it out for me. I did not rearrange one word. Okay. All we can do is wait. Well, suppose she doesn't come. What? Shh, shh, Is that the front door? Yes. And she's here. Now, remember, be tough. I'll do the best I can, Mr. Hampton. I'll be behind those drapes listening to every word. Oh, I hope my courage doesn't fail me. Oh, Miss Keats. All right, Brown. Uh, may I see the diamonds, please? Wouldn't you rather look at this? A gun. Surprise? You're going to kill me. Oh, I should have known that I couldn't trust a murderer. Let me see that suicide note and that memorandum. Why, I, I haven't got them with me. Brownie, you did a lot of talking on the phone. I'm going to give you exactly one minute to prove what you said. Uh, those papers are at my home. Uh, now, if, if you'll come with me... <laughs> oh, you must have been a cute baby, Brown. Well, not as cute as you were, I'll bet. Huh? Don't turn around, Myra. I'm loaded, too. Why, you double-crossing little weasel. Just put the gun on the table and don't call my friend any names. Thanks, honey. You know, this is the nicest present I've had since I met you. Why, you... You didn't have a gun at all. I have one now, baby. You dirty double Don't be so beautiful. You just learned something. Hindsight isn't always better than foresight. Ah, shall we talk now? You're a heel. While I've been chasing all over town looking for you, you've been busy with a double cross. Brownie tells me you've been chasing around with Randy. What? You came here to get him, didn't you? Well, yes, but he never gave me the chance. Is that so? You went to Mr. Randy's apartment with him, Miss Keats. I saw you leave. But you also saw Randy come back, didn't you, Brownie? I did not. Listen, Hal, this guy's lying. When Randy and I got outside, there was a cop in front of the store. Randy didn't say anything to him about my gun, but he ducked back into the store. And that was the last I saw of him. Shall we believe it, Brownie? Of course not. Well, she's as guilty as, as, as... Well, she's just too guilty for words. You two make quite a team, don't you? Two pitchers and one catcher. Oh, why don't you be sensible, Miss Keats? We know you're guilty. You have the jewels. And you committed two murders to keep them. You can't possibly get away. He's right, Mara. He's never been so right in his life. Yeah. Take a look at this suicide note. And you'll see what I mean. And you had it all the time. Read it, honey. Yeah. We'll be discovered that... Hal, this note mentions Sam. Mm-hmm. 
And now, Brownie, tell her that Randy never kept a memorandum about his crooked deals. And tell her why. Well, that part of it, Mr. Hampton, was your suggestion. Sure. Where else would it come from? Hal, if I only had that gun now for one second... You'd commit murder, baby, and that'd be very foolish. Because then, uh, Brownie wouldn't get lonesome in a death house. What? What did you say, Mr. Hampton? Let me break it down for you. You killed Sam Lawless and Mr. Randy. Hal, you mean he... Him? Yes, darling, he... And all he wanted was to keep the diamonds Randy let him hold for a while. Now, look here, Mr. Hampton. Perhaps you don't realize what you're saying, You're the but... trusted employee, the man who could take orders. Now, uh, shall we go to your apartment and uh, see if it sparkles? Hmm? Very well. If you must be convinced... Uh, I'll get your hand out of your pocket, Mr. Brown. Uh, yes, uh, with this. Oh! 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 Hell, you shot him. Only in the gun hand, baby. From now on and uh, until death do him part, his... Uh, Aim won't be so good. So, uh, Brownie had those diamonds after all, just as you said. Were you doubtful, Myra? Well, to tell you the truth, Hal, I... But why did he kill Sam? To frame you. Me? I thought you were it. I was. Until Brownie heard Sam accuse you, remember? In Sam's office while I was in the other room, unconscious. But how... Now, don't argue with me. It's in his confession. Randy sent him back with a message. And he listened at the door. Wow. So did I. What? I wasn't quite as unconscious as you and Sam thought. Oh. And you heard Sam accuse me of palming that stone. The one I found in your chest of drawers. And I believed him. But I uh, know better now. Yeah? That's in Brownie's confession, too. He came while I was out. He knew his way around, didn't he? Yeah, but he didn't know when to stop talking. He should never have mentioned two murders. But there were two, Hal. Mm-hmm. But he only knew about one. That is, uh, he should have known only about one. Well, didn't you tell him about Sam? No. Did you? Uh-uh. Not a word. Hal. Hmm? You were once a pretty famous diamond thief. So? Do you think you'll ever go back to it? Oh, no, dear. Not after I spent five years in prison breaking stones. Hal. Yeah? I'm so glad I met you tonight. Oh. Prove it. Hmm? Prove it. If, uh, you know what I mean. And, uh, I do hope you do. And so closes tonight's story, Death Deals a Diamond. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Larry Haynes played the part of Hal Hampton. Charlotte Lawrence was Myra Keats. Maurice Franklin was Brown. King Calder was her to Sam Lawless. Reese Taylor played Randy. And Joan Tompkins was Cookie. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes. Come over a week from tonight. Good. We have a very unusual story of a circus lion that was trained for murder. It's called Serenade Macabre. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there's a new crime club book available this week. And every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.